Hi and welcome to this look at the 14 day weather prospects. January has got off to a cold start and there has been snow in parts of central northern England in particular. Now is the cold weather set to continue as we go through the next couple of weeks? I'll start by taking a look at the picture across Europe and the North Atlantic. Here we go, 18 GMT, Tuesday the 5th of January. The UK is under a cold east or northeasterly airstream with high pressure centred to our west or northwest. I'll play the sequence so we can see what happens in the short term. Here we are, I'll pause at 18 GMT, Thursday the 7th of January. By this point, high pressure has pulled away further to our west and areas of low pressure are influencing things more. Winds have turned back into a northerly or northeasterly direction. And through this period, we've got more organised bands of uh, wintry showers pushing southwards across all parts of the UK. They do bring the potential for some sleet or snow especially to the northern half of the country and over higher ground. But I wouldn't be surprised even if in the southern half of the country some places do see a covering of snow, perhaps on Thursday or Friday, the 8th of January. I'll continue the sequence to step through the weekend. And here we are at 06 GMT on Sunday, the 10th of January. By this point, things are beginning to change quite noticeably. We've got high pressure centred to the uh, southwest. Winds are going into more of a westerly direction, and that indicates that it is going to be turning milder. On this particular chart, you probably see we have more blue shading, more green shading, which indicates rain. And the white shading is retreating further north. Um, that's what is indicating snow. So by this point, as I say, temperatures may well be beginning to rise, particularly across the northern half of the UK. With high pressure having more influence in the south, it could stay colder there for a while longer. I'll just play the sequence through to its end to give you an idea. Here we are, 12 GMT on Tuesday, the 12th of January. By that point, we've got an area of low pressure centred over the UK, moving away eastwards. It's very much an Atlantic driven pattern. The details at this stage, of course, are subject to quite a lot of change and modification. The key thing to appreciate is that we've lost that northerly flow or, or, and, and the easterly flow, which we currently have, and milder air is pushing in from the west or the, uh, the southwest. Um, but the, the actual timing of showers or long spells of rain is, is, is subject to change at that range. If I switch across to a sequence showing upper air temperatures, you'll be able to see that more clearly. Here we go. So again, this starts at 12 GMT, Tuesday, the 5th of January. You can see the UK here under blue shading, which is indicating pretty cold upper level air. I'll just play this and we'll go through the coming days we can see this Thursday and Friday, cold air moves down from the north. However, as we go through the weekend, it's all change. Across the southern half of the UK by 18 GMT on Sunday the 10th of January, it's still, there's still some uh, cold air aloft. This is, this is about 1500 metres above sea level. But these, the, the light blues and green shading across the northern half of the UK are indicating a milder air mass moving in. If I just play this through to its conclusion. Here we go, 12 GMT, Tuesday the 12th of January. Virtually the whole of the UK is under green or light blue shading. So by then, temperatures even in the southern half of the country should be higher than they have been for some time. Will the milder or less cold conditions last? To get some ideas, let's take a look at the 16-day GEFS ensemble model plots. This one is for London and the southeast of England. On the top half, it shows 850 HPA temperatures. Those are at about 1500 meters above sea level. In the short term, all of the individual runs 
keep uh, values below the 30 year average which is shown by this thick black line running horizontally across the chart. However, by about the 11th of January, there's a clear upwards trend and through the rest of the run, which goes out until the 21st of January, it does look like there's good support for close to average or above average 850 HPA temperatures. What that suggests is that the milder conditions, or at least the less cold ones, will be lasting through the middle third of the month. The lower half of the plot shows precipitation and the snow row, which is an indicator of how many individual runs within the ensemble are forecasting snow to fall, not necessarily accumulate, on a given day. In other words, that could just be suggesting one or two flakes mixed into a shower. It really is not given any indication of the amount or whether the snow will accumulate. It's very important to remember that with the snow row. Saying that, values in the short term are pretty high. They, the maximum they can be is 33 and we see them going up to 28, 22, 16 but there isn't a great deal of precipitation being forecast. So in other words, perhaps just a few flakes mixed into, uh, into a shower. Through the middle third of the month, what happens is quite interesting. The amount of uh, precipitation being forecast increases, but of course we've got that milder air moving in. So the chance of it falling as snow really diminishes. The snow road dips down and on a number of days there it's at zero. So quite a big change. Um, precipitation increases, it turns milder. Snow, no, not anymore. It's rain. Very typical, I'm afraid, if you're a snow fan. Taking a look at Cardiff, it's a very, very similar picture. Sometimes we go uh, to western part of the southern half of the United Kingdom, things change, but here it's, it's the same story. Up to the northwest, to Glasgow, even there it's actually quite similar. In the monthly forecast which I issued um, recently, I suggested the possibility of the colder conditions hanging on through the middle third of January in the northern half of the country. That's now looking a little bit less likely. Having said that, there are still a number of runs here which keep it colder in, in the Glasgow area. So therefore it's possible any milder incursions up there will be shorter lived, but it doesn't look like the uh, it doesn't look like the cold air is going to remain in place uh, through the period. It could be it could be quite changeable. I've been focusing on 850 HPA temperatures. Uh, let me quickly show you the two meter temperature forecast from the GEFS model for London. So these are the ones that we experienced down at the ground level. In the short term, what we can see on this table is that 100% of the runs are forecasting maximum values of between 1 Celsius and 5 Celsius. That remains the case during the next few days, through, so through the 8th, the 9th and the 10th of January. By the 11th of January, things do begin to change a little bit. We now have 13% of the runs going for maximum values of between 6 Celsius and 10 Celsius. That increases in the following days. By the 12th of January, it's 52%, 61%. Then by the 14th, 68 It keeps going up and up until the 16th of January, when 81% of the runs in the, in the GEFS go for maximum values in London to be between 6 Celsius and 10 Celsius. That is quite mild for mid-January. It's also worth stating, I think, that in my experience, the GEFS runs often tend to be a little bit conservative with their maximum values. It's quite usually the case that you can add maybe one or two Celsius, even at this time of year, to, to the forecast predictions from this model. During the last few days, there is a slight 
increase in in the number of cold runs. Um, we've got 45% there going for between 1 and 5 Celsius on the 18th and the 19th of January. But the majority are still in milder clusters, 42% going for the 6 to 10 Celsius. And there's even 13, 10% there going for 11 Celsius to 15 Celsius, which really would be pretty mild indeed for the time of the year. So I think that illustrates quite well the warming trend down at the ground level during the, uh, during the next 16 days. Just taking a look at the bigger picture here. This is showing forecast temperature anomalies again at the two meter, two meter level, so down at the ground level basically. Days 0 to 5, so day 1, uh, day 0 being Tuesday the 5th of January. Um, we can see the UK under lots of blue shading, indicating pretty cold conditions relative to the norm. If I jump to the next chart, days 5 to 10, there's still some blue shading there, but it's becoming, it's becoming lighter, indicating that the anomaly is fading. And there's some pink or red shading beginning to appear over parts of the UK. Pink or red indicates above average temperatures. So, so these two charts again are indicating a transition to two milder conditions taking place during the next 10 days. Finally, a quick peek at the latest 35 day 2 metre temperature forecast chart for London. Won't go into the details, just very, very, very briefly. In the uh, medium term, what we can see is temperatures rising after the cold start. So that's in line with the 16 day plots that we were looking at. They stay probably close to or above the average until around the 26th of January. But thereafter, there is a downwards trend clearly appearing, um, particularly in the early part of February. As I discussed in the January uh, video forecast, there is a sudden stratospheric warming event, which is imminently expected. An SSW increases the risk of cold weather in the UK uh, several weeks down the line. So therefore, what we see in here could tie in quite nicely with it. But remember that an SSW is no guarantee of cold weather in the UK. And regardless of that, forecast confidence at this range as ever is pretty low. To summarise, it's a cold start and wintry showers could push southwards and become more widespread for a time. Through the middle third of the month, it increasingly looks set to turn milder, particularly but not only in the southern half of the UK. In the longer term, forecast confidence is very low, but the sudden stratospheric warming event, that increases the chance of cold conditions returning late in January and in early February. It's not a guarantee though. So thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful and interesting, please hit the like button and remember to subscribe to my channel so that you'll be notified of future updates. Thanks very much now. Bye.